the big question is what is driving that higher forecast for the year and how much of these gains are tied to the fact that HBO Max is simultaneously streaming movies when they're in theaters, something which is only set to continue through the end of this year. Yeah, I think two big drivers of, of continued growth. We've had three quarters in the U.S., over two and a half million net subscriber ads. And, and now, of course, going from one to 40 countries with the, the launch into Latin. But the first one's programming. Yeah, Julia, I've known you a long time. You know, I, my roots are in tech. I love product. I love the challenge of getting the right program in front of the right person at the right time. Um, but in the end, if, if, our if, if our programming folks are creating stories that matter, everything will work and everything worked this quarter. It's both the movies that you mentioned as well as episodic. The whole industry is a little thin on episodic right now because of production uh, 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 shutdowns for COVID. Uh, but despite that, they're still firing on all cylinders. I mean, we had Mayor of Easttown, we had Hacks, we had the Friends reunion in the quarter, all of which got Emmys. Flight attendant got an Emmy from earlier uh, uh, in the schedule. And so programming firing on all cylinders and the interplay between films and episodic is something we're learning from. I think people sort of, to use a Clay Christensen term, hire those things to, to, to do a different job for them on a different evening. We've learned a lot. And then the second thing uh, in terms of power and growth I already mentioned, which is uh, we went to two regions, one to 40 countries. That's going to continue for, for years. And we're excited to, to get that journey going. You know, Andy, I can't ignore the giant Suicide Squad poster behind you. You have yet another of your, I believe it was 18 movies this year that's coming out directed at consumer in a couple of weeks. And I'm wondering, as you look ahead to next year and the fact that that simultaneous release strategy is going to end, do you have any sense of how that's going to impact your growth um, or what needs to be done to mitigate that? Well well, I mentioned some of the impact this year, and it's really industry-wide in terms of the, the shadow of COVID production shutdowns. It's made some of the episodic stuff industry-wide a little thin. That, it, by, by Q4, that will hopefully have been erased, and, and we're on schedule. You know, Casey Boys and team have a fantastic schedule in Q4. That continues through the next year. We've announced House of Dragon, which is the Game of Thrones prequel. Uh, there's Peacemaker from James Gunn, a great series in the first quarter. That's phenomenal. I've seen some of it. It's just amazing. So I think that's going to counterbalance. And then film doesn't go away. We're going to continue to experiment with Windows. We have a great slate of straight to uh, uh, HBO Max movies that, that are that are Max originals. We have a theatrical slate. The Windows will contract a little bit. Uh, uh, Toby Emmerich's slate looks really good for next year. And the whole industry will experiment with Windows. But we feel pretty good about that transition. Can't underestimate the impact the films have had on us this year, though. They've been tremendous, especially to make up for some of the schedule shortages given COVID. Andy, speaking of experiments, have you thought about putting mobile games in the HBO Max app? And if not, why not? So I, I think the experimentation you'll see there is part of lots of folks in the industry thinking about how do they manage franchises. And the good news for us and certainly for Disney and others is we've got decades, if not more, experience in doing that. John, to answer your question, we don't have any immediate plans to put games in the app. We, we have a great games division, and Ann Starnoff's part of the business. Our IP is put to use in those games. We, it's part of managing franchises really effectively. Uh, we'll continue to do that, but nothing in the short term in the app. Our, our job is to make it really easy to find a show or movie you want to watch and, and, and get people engaged and keep them on the service. And right now, that's, that's working well. Okay, so perhaps not games in the platform. Uh, to that point that you say programming is important, but you're also a tech guy, and we saw this announcement yesterday, HBO Max with Snapchat and making it easier to co-watch. Talk a little bit about that strategy and how you are introducing technology to what end and for what reason. Sure, I'll just say younger viewers are different. Um, the, the generational differences are significant, and we're going to see that play out over the, the next decade as, as people age up a little and see is it a generational difference or an age difference? But Snapchat is a great example, um, great partnership with them to get some of our content out there and let people sample it and and uh, and get interested and obviously hopefully find their way back to HBO Max. You'll see us experiment doing that. Um, you know, it's obviously there's huge contention, not just in SVOD, but for screen time in general. And younger viewers are aware of that contention is at its highest. So we, we expect a lot from the Snap partnership and you'll see us expand that.